the sky this month with your host, Dave McDonald. Welcome to the sky this month. I'm your host, Dave McDonald, and this is December 2023. And what a month of anniversaries we have. We have planets in the sky. We have a meteor shower this month, the Geminid meteor shower and so many things to talk about. Now, you may be asking yourself, what's that behind you, Dave? Well, I think you can see it's the Wright Brothers airplane. And then you have the brother there watching, and this happened on December 17th, 1903, was the Wright Brothers' first powered flight from Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. And to help celebrate this, We're going to have a special program at the McAuliffe Shepherd Discovery Center. And this is called 12 Decades of Flight, right? 120 years celebration at the McAuliffe Shepherd Discovery Center. And that is going to be December 16th and 17th. So check it out at starhop, S-T-A-R-H-O-P dot com. And uh, find out more information and how you can come. And it's going to be a great day. So, again, speaking of anniversaries, uh, a big anniversary coming up is Apollo 8. This month represents 55 years of since Apollo 8 circled the moon, if you remember, a Christmas Eve uh, back in 1968. And I want to thank Lucas and Andrew and Odin for their help in putting this slide presentation together. I was going to have a guest on the show to kind of go back and forth, and unfortunately, stuff happens and people get sick. So uh, Lucas and Andrew and Odin filled in nicely to help get some slides together at the last minute before our show taping. So let's begin. Apollo 8, I really love how they put this together because each crew gets to design their own crew patch. And I really like this, uh, Borman, Lovell, and Anders. And you can see uh, how the spaceship goes around Earth and then around the moon, making an eight. The shape of the capsule kind of looks like an A. I think this is very artistic and very creatively done. So let's talk a little bit about the Apollo 8 mission. So this is the crew. Uh, And they are the internationally renowned crew of the Apollo 8, and then we have the, I'll just read the bottom, I know you can read it too. From the left, Commander Frank Borman, the Lunar Module Pilot, William Anders, and Command Module Pilot uh, James Lovell, that we call Jim Lovell. And uh, so those are the guys that went up in the Apollo 8. And then next, we'll take a peek at the launch, This happened December 21st, 1968, so 55 years ago. We're celebrating the 55th anniversary this month of December. And the mission was to send humans to the moon and back safely. And it was an important prelude to the lunar landing, which would be happening uh, the next coming uh, July. So pretty cool. The next image just a couple more images of, uh, of the launch. And you can see in the picture that's over on the right, uh, some birds got scared. Because <laughs> uh, that is about three miles away. Obviously, telephoto zoom lens uh, in, in use there. But uh, they keep people uh, three miles, at least three miles away from the launch. And this is the first ever launch of the Saturn V rocket. And uh, we, we, it was an amazing, and it just performed so well throughout the, uh, the uh, Apollo program. Werner von Braun was the scientist who basically defected from Germany. He was involved with the V2 rocket program in Germany. He was not into killing people, and uh, he was not a fan at that time of uh, Germany and what was going on. He came to the United States and said, hey, by the way, I am a rocket scientist. And NASA hired him. Obviously, it was a little more background check than just that. 
but he did uh, engineer the Saturn V rocket and take a look at how big this rocket is. Taller than the Statue of Liberty. We're talking 363 feet for the Saturn V rocket, where the Statue of Liberty is a mere 305 feet tall. So you, if you laid the Saturn V rocket down, it would occupy more than three foot, no, it would <laughs> occupy more than one football field. I was thinking yards and feet. So amazingly huge rocket. And interestingly enough, it's just that little tiny bit up at the top. Uh, and I don't have a laser pointer to point it out, but you see that the, it looks like a pencil on the top. That's the escape rocket to take the capsule off in case anything happened during uh, liftoff. But it's just that tiny little triangle piece on the top. That's all that's coming back to Earth. Uh, the rest, the most of it is used to get us to escape velocity, which is 25,000 miles an hour, and get us off to the moon. And then the astronauts would circle the moon. So let's move on. This is uh, a photoshopped image in a way. Okay, So it's the real image of the moon and Earth. So those are real. But then, and this is the real image of the Apollo 8 spacecraft. But, it's, uh, but nobody was there in space to take this actual as a photograph. So, but it just kind of shows what's going on. We're at the moon, Earth is way out there, and the spacecraft, the Apollo 8 spacecraft, is here in orbit around the moon. <coughs> Next. So let's talk about the crew. There were three of them, James Lovell, born March 25th, 1928, in Cleveland, Ohio. He's now 95 years old here. And he was a former US Naval pilot, as well as mechanical engineer. And he would be part of both this, what we're talking about, Apollo 8, and the unfortunate uh, of Apollo 13. So interestingly enough, he's the only astronaut who went to the moon twice, circled the moon twice, but never got to land and walk on the moon. He was also involved in Gemini 7 and Gemini 12, which were very important precursors to the Apollo missions. So uh, next, on, uh, this is a photo of G Jim during the flight of Apollo 8, and he was the command module uh, pilot. William Anders was born in Hong Kong. I didn't know that in, in, until I was doing this uh, presentation with my students, which was awesome. October 17, 1933, he's a former NASA astronaut. He retired in 1969, and now he's 90 uh, years old, and uh, wish him the best. But he is definitely very famous for an image that I'm sure you have seen somewhere along the line. So take a look at this. This is the famed Earthrise photo. So let's take a closer look at this image. And this was taken December 24th, Christmas Eve, 1968. And there's a video clip that you can look up uh, online. If you look up Earthrise, Apollo 8, it's about, well, the one I watched was about six minutes long. And it's really kind of humorous in a way because they weren't expecting this. This was not in their flight plan. This is a uh, a very lucky instance of getting this photo, and they actually missed the photo op three times when they could have seen it as the spacecraft was orbiting uh, the moon, but the orientation of the spacecraft had to be just so, so they could see this out the window. And then Bill Anders noticed it, and he's like, give me a camera, and they were using professional Hasselblad cameras, and those of you who are into photography, recognize the name. It's a very professional camera, high resolution film camera. And uh, so that was uh, a very cool picture. And he needed, he wanted color film because you can see obviously the blue of the oceans there on Earth. And he, it took them a while, but uh, I, guess, I think it was Jim Lovell that came up with some color film, 
loaded the film in the camera and snapped, I think it was three pictures similar to this, this being exactly one of them. So very cool Earthrise. Then we come to Frank Borman, and Frank was born in 1928 in Gary, Indiana, a part of the Apollo 8 mission, obviously, and also Gemini 7. He was a colonel in the U.S. Air Force and retired on July 1st, 1970. And he passed away just last month, the beginning of November, November 7th, uh, 2023. So that's uh, the first one to pass away from the Apollo 8 mission. And uh, the Apollo astronauts that are still alive are, are going well. They're you know, basically all in their 90s. And uh, hopefully we'll have them from some time to come because obviously it'll be a sad day when the last man who went to the moon and walked on the moon uh, passes away. So, Frank Borman. We see Frank did work both on Gemini 7 and Apollo 8, and this is being from the Gemini, where Frank was checking the Gemini spacecraft during a weight and balance test, as it says. So, again, Gemini was a very important program to get ready, and that's where they first did docking maneuvers, which was incredibly important to be able to dock the Apollo spacecraft, the mothership, so to speak, the command module with the lunar lander. And that was uh, obviously coming up in uh, Apollo 11. So next, um, during the Christmas announcement, they used a small handheld camera that they were live on to show the world, the moon, from about 70 miles above the surface of the moon. You can see here in this photo. And then hit the newspapers everywhere. Apollo 11 sweeps into an incredible Christmas Eve orbit around the moon. And so uh, this was big news. One, we've got three human beings orbiting the moon and just kind of cool, kind of neat that it happened to be on Christmas Eve. So uh, what happened live when in your home TV uh, on Christmas Eve, there was a broadcast and uh, we have a, uh, about a two-minute clip from NASA that is what people saw that Christmas Eve. So this is exactly what people saw and heard on their TV sets on Christmas Eve, 1968. We are now approaching uh, lunar sunrise. And uh, for all the people back on Earth, the crew of Apollo 8, has a message that we would like to send to you. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good and divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. <laughs> and God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And from the crew of Apollo 8, we close with good night, good luck, a Merry Christmas, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good earth. So, I hope you enjoyed that. I, it, it's just amazing that uh, they were able to do that. And, 
there's an article in Astronomy Magazine, December this year, December, uh, that talks a little bit about how they came up with that decision to read the first ten verses from, uh, from Genesis. Kind of a neat story, and obviously all three of them took turns reading and wish us a, you know, a Merry Christmas, all of us, here on the good earth. So, there's your uh, earth rise photo once again. Iconic, and uh, thank you Bill Anders for taking that. And then a subsequent, uh, I think it was Apollo 17, but a subsequent Apollo mission has like more of the earth just hanging in the black of space. So next, uh, that image is on a stamp. The beginning of the reading, in the beginning God was on a U.S. postage stamp. Look at the price. Six cents, a six cent stamp back in 1998. I imagine this came out in 1998, uh, 1968, and it probably came out in 1969. But uh, a stamp commemorating this great Apollo mission on that Christmas Eve. Then, this is, they're finished, they went around the moon, now they're on their way back. It took 25,000 miles an hour to get away from Earth to go to the moon. They went around the moon and now they're coming back, gravity's attracting them, and they're going 25,000 miles an hour once again. And now they have to bleed off all that speed on their way back from the moon, and now most of that speed is going to be bled off by entering Earth's atmosphere where we get that fire enveloping the entire space capsule. And that causes a radio communication blackout, uh, which is always you know, concerning because you want to hear the voices of the astronauts after that couple minute uh, blackout. And on each Apollo mission, we did. And it was a, uh, just an amazing thing to have people went to the moon, orbited the moon, and now they're back. So next, we see the parachute's opened, and the capsule comes plummeting down from space onto the ocean. Then we also have the capsule on the deck of the uh, aircraft carrier. Splashdown happens, the capsule comes back safely, and the men are safe. So now we see a picture of the guys, and they're all quite happy. And uh, Frank Borman there, and uh, Bill Andrews behind, the guy who took the picture. Jim Lovell is off to the right side of your screen. And just uh, thinking about the Apollo 11 mission, one thing that was starkly different from these guys coming back onto the deck of the aircraft carrier, uh, well, Apollo 11 people, uh, when they came out of the capsule and got out of the helicopter, uh, they went right into like an Airstream van or an Airstream um, trailer for I think it was uh, 10 days, 2 weeks, because they had actually walked on the moon and Mike Collins was in the close proximity of Buzz and Neil who walked on the moon and we didn't know if they were bugs. <laughs> we didn't know what would come back, so there was a period of quarantine to see if anything developed or anybody got sick or if there were any symptoms at all. And uh, the good news is there wasn't, and uh, so they got out of their quarantine and missions down the road when they figured out it appears nothing lives on the moon, so we're in good shape. Next, quite a stark contrast as we look at these uh, images of the Apollo astronauts on the left, and as time goes on, they get older. And that's the three of them, obviously, uh, on the right side of the screen. And again, uh, Frank Borman uh, died uh, November 7th, 2023. We take a peek at Time Magazine. These three guys, Borman and Lovell and Anders, were nominated Men of the Year for 1968, and this is, uh, you know, 1969 magazine, but uh, they were the men of the year that went around the moon. And this is kind of a postcard off to the right. You see, again, the logo that they put together, the patch that they put together. 
Uh, each one of them personally signed it. And there's the iconic United States postage stamp with the uh, Earthrise and in the beginning God and then the postmark. And so, uh, good job to the Apollo 8 crew. And we are thankful for you all and what you've done and what you're allowing us to do now that we are looking forward to the Artemis mission uh, moving forward. So, very cool. So, happy anniversary, happy 55th anniversary, Apollo 8. Okay, we're going to transition a little bit, and next we're going to just quickly mention to you, this is just the, the brief, we're in the second anniversary, uh, because it was December 25th, 2021, at about 7.20 a.m., when the uh, James Webb Space Telescope was launched, and maybe you remember that just being two years ago, instead of you know, like 55 years ago. And so it was launched with an Ariane 5, the European Space Agency. We have a nice cooperation with them, uh, basically uh, trading services, if you will. And then we're going to talk more about the James Webb Space Telescope uh, next month in January. Some things to be watching out for, and I'm going to show you uh, where to find these things in the sky. The first week of December, Mercury is in the west after sunset. You want to look for Mercury. It's uh, very, very cool to find Mercury. It's elusive, and it, we're at a magnitude of negative 0.4, and then it's going to dim over the course of the month to like zero around the 11th, and then a 0.7 around the 15th. Now, those are still bright magnitudes, but the thing to remember, as you'll see in the image I'm going to show you in a little bit, uh, Mercury is always in a lit sky. It's never in a dark sky. December 14th, the Geminid meteor shower peaks, and this is probably going to be the best shower of the entire year. So it's going to be chilly. Get your long johns on, get your wool cap, get a sleeping bag, get a lawn chair, get out and enjoy looking up uh, and stay out for, you know, an hour or two. Get some hot chocolate, some donuts, and enjoy it, because this is going to be uh, hopefully it's clear, uh, but December 14, 15, 16 is fine. The night of the 14th is like the peak and uh, best show of the year. Hopefully it'll be uh, clear. Then December 17th, the moon and Saturn hang out together. I'll show you that. And then as I already mentioned to you, December 17 and 18 at the McCall Shepherd Discovery Center, we have a dozen decades of flight. December 21st is the winter solstice at 10.27 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, don't miss that. It's going to happen whether you are aware of it or not. And uh, I am going to show you an image of what the sky looks like on that day at 10.27. We'll close the program with that. And then also December 21st, uh, the moon and Jupiter are hanging out together. So those are some things to look forward to. And the next slide... We're just going to recap the fact that we have this program, the 12 Decades of Flight Celebration, coming up at the McAuliffe Shepherd Discovery Center in Concord, New Hampshire. Visit starhop.com to find out all the details. All right, so we're going to transition now to the night sky and talk about the planets and what you can see in your backyard. Well, great month again, and here we're going to look at Mercury. Remember I told you that it's always in a bright sky? This is December 7th, and we are at like 4.40. We're like 30 minutes or so after sunset, and you can see how close Mercury is to the horizon. It gets up a little higher the next couple days, but it never gets out of the glare of the sun, so you want to find a nice low southwest horizon to enjoy looking at Mercury. Binoculars will help you find it. And then after you find it with your binoculars, you should be able to see there it is. And it's, it's really a treat because not many people see Mercury. It's very elusive. So make it a project this first week of uh, December. And you can see Saturn is up in the sky and uh, you should be able to see that about that time as well. Next, we're going to take a look at the 17th because one thing that I mentioned to you on the 17th is that we have 
the Moon and Saturn are right next to each other. This is December 17th, and that's kind of going to be a great picture to take. It's a waxing gibbous moon that's uh, happening, and that is facing south. This is about 6 o'clock on December 17th. Saturn and the moon. That's going to be great to look at. Then, next, we're going to jump ahead to December 21st, which, remember, is the solstice. December 21st at 10.27 p.m. is when the Earth excuse me, when the sun hits the Tropic of Capricorn, and that's as far south as it's going to go, that's 23 and a half degrees south of the equator, and at that moment at 10.27 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, it's like the sun is going to bounce off the Tropic of Capricorn and start coming northward towards summer. Cool, huh? So, also on the 21st, you can see the Moon and Jupiter are hanging out together, so that's uh, neat. And then if you're interested in finding Uranus, binoculars are needed, but if you're interested in finding Uranus, notice that you find Jupiter easily enough. Now the Moon's going to move, so this is the 21st, the 22nd, the Moon's going to move over to about here. The Moon moves about a fist's, I'm not sure if I can do that in here, it doesn't work exactly quite right. But it moves about a fist's width each night from night to night. So the moon is going to continue to make its way in this direction from night to night. So, but Jupiter is going to be relatively uh, not going too far during December. And between Jupiter and the star cluster we know as the Pleiades is where you're going to find the planet Uranus. Binoculars will show it up nicely. A telescope, even better, you'll be able to see the disk. Next. I'm going to bring up the lines here just so we can identify some constellations here. And here we have uh, Uranus, where I told you it was. And then the Moon on this night of the 21st is in Pisces. Jupiter is kind of on the borderline of Pisces, and this is Cetus, the sea monster. And notice that this is 6 o'clock, again 6 o'clock, and we have uh, Orion is just rising at that time. But on the same night, December 21st, we're going to jump ahead to the moment of the solstice. So let's do that. On December 21st, this is 10.27 p.m., facing south. We're facing south, and as you look south, and you look up, you will see uh, Orion. And then towards the southwest, but still very high in the sky, you'll still see uh, the moon and Jupiter together. So that's going to be... A great night. Hopefully it's clear. The winter solstice, 1027 p.m. Uh, and then we can also point out to you the star Sirius, which is the brightest star in the night sky that we ever get to see. Next month we'll talk more about Orion. We'll talk about the winter hexagon and a lot of great things for you to see. So to recap some of the things going on, we have um, 12 Decades of Flight, don't forget it, the McCall Shepherd Discovery Center, December 16th and 17th. And then also, don't forget to go outside and look at the first week, find Mercury in the west after sunset. December 14th, the best meteor shower of the year. Dress warmly, go out and enjoy it. The Geminid meteor shower peaks, but if it's going to be cloudy that night, you can see it, you know, the 12th, 13th, 15th, 16th, it still is going to be fine. And then December 17th, the Moon and Saturn. December 17 and 18, McCall Shepherd Discovery Center. Wright Brothers Anniversary, 120 years have gone by since December 17th, 1903. And then the winter solstice happens at 10.27 p.m. on December 21st. And then that same night and also the 22nd, you're going to find the Moon and Jupiter together. Lots of stuff happening. I hope you enjoyed the show and enjoy celebrating these anniversaries, and get out and enjoy the night sky. It's the best show on earth, and you can see it in your backyard. And as Jack Horkheimer, my hero, would say, keep looking up. I'm Dave McDonald for The Sky This Month.